Hi, my name is Jack Allen, and I'm a PhD student here at San Diego State University in Dr. Ricardo Zayas's lab. And the question that we seek to address in our lab is how do stem cells know what to become? And so stem cells are remarkable cells that have two properties. One, they can divide and make more of themselves, that is, they self-renew. And two, they can differentiate into other cell types. So say we have a neuron here, or that cell could have maybe become, let's say, a columnar epithelial cell like you would find in your gut. And what we like to study is this decision point here. When and what cell uh, should these stem cells differentiate into? And the study of that has implications in development, aging, and in cancer. And so how do the cells make this decision? Well, to start, we look at their DNA that is the blueprint of life. And so within this DNA is all the information the cells need to become different cells. But I'd like, you can, I'd like you to consider that essentially all the cells in your body have the same set of DNA. That is, they have the same set of blueprints. So how is it that one cell is able to read those blueprints and become a neuron, and another cell is able to read the same blueprints but become a completely different cell? Well, the answer to that partially lies in the study of epigenetics. And that's how the DNA is packaged within the cell. And so we look at what are called histone proteins um, that exist in the nucleus. And what they do, they have little tails coming out. Um, what they do is they bind to and the DNA wraps around them. Um, and based on how this binding happens can affect what parts of the blueprint are available. So I like to think of these as the filing cabinets of the cell. That is, uh, based on whether or not they're open or locked, various areas of the blueprints or DNA are available for that cell to become red. And so that tells the cell that only certain parts of the blueprint should be red. And so how do these histones um, become open or closed? Well, these tails that stick out provide part of the answer. They're available to be modified and read by other proteins. So for example, one such mark that we study in our lab, ubiquitin, it's a small protein, gets put on histone H2B. That tells the chromatin to adopt an open or beads on the string. It's called confirmation. And this is active or able to be read. So this is a blueprint that the cell wants to use. Likewise, the same modification, but on a different part of the cell, this is crazy, has completely the opposite effect. It causes the chromatin to condense down and become closed, thereby locking that blueprint um, from that cell. And so we want to ask the question is, how does affecting the filing cabinet status of this blueprint affect stem cell regulation? And we want to do that in a whole organism context. And so in our lab, we utilize this remarkable organism, um, the flatworm Schmittea mediterranea, which looks about like that. Um, and it has this remarkable ability that if you cut it any which way just about um, and observe it over the course of about a week, you'll get back an entirely regenerated, regrown organism in every way. And it's able to do this um, because it has a huge population of stem cells. And so what we can do is we can ask the question, what happens when we affect these proteins that, that um, modify these histones? So for example, we can get rid of the genes that put that mark on there. That would get rid of this mark on the histone and force more of the filing cabinets to be open and see what effect that has on regeneration. So for example, um, instead of regenerating back completely, they might just regenerate back one eye. Um, they might not regenerate a head at all. Um, and by, by examining regeneration, how it happens, and the various cell types involved, that sheds insights onto how the stem cells um, and the filing cabinets in the stem cells are affecting development and aging and cancer. And we hope to use what we learn here to apply it to humans because most of the same pathways that these guys use are the same ones in humans. We have the same histones, the same modifiers, um, and we organize our blueprints in the same way. So thank you very much.